13 Star Trek films were released between 1979 and 2016. The actors from Star Trek The Original Series starred in the first six Star Trek motion pictures, while the actors from Star Trek The Next Generation appeared in the following four. The first two Star Trek movies, which were the franchise's biggest box office hits, were directed by J.J. Abrams. Let's look at each Star Trek film in order of quality from worst to best. Number one is Star Trek Nemesis. The fourth and last movie in the Star Trek The Next Generation series to feature the cast was Star Trek Nemesis. It was the lowest grossing Star Trek film ever when it was released around Christmas of 2002. To mixed reviews, the screenplay by John Logan, who received an Oscar nomination for Gladiator, is a clear reworking of Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, complete with an almost similar climax with Data dying exactly like Spock did, despite the film featuring a youthful Tom Hardy as the malevolent Shinzon. In addition, Star Trek Nemesis is a dark and dismal film with poorly thought out scenes such as Captain Picard pursuing a dune buggy on a foreign planet and Shinzon molesting Troy. Number two is Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. The classic quote from Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, what does God need with a starship, sums up the foolishness of the premise. Star Trek V, the only film directed by William Shatner, who also came up with the idea of the USS Enterprise crew meeting God, was released in the fiercely competitive summer of 1989 and was the lowest grossing Star Trek movie until Star Trek Nemesis. While Lawrence Luckenbill plays Spock's half-brother Cybok in Star Trek V, Shatner's film is replete with B-movie quality visual effects and corny slapstick humor. But despite Star Trek V being the weakest of the original cast's movies, the bookend campfire sequence featuring Kirk, Spock, and McCoy on vacation added a much-needed warmth and charm. Number three is Star Trek The Motion Picture. After 10 years, the original Starship Enterprise crew was brought back together on screen in Star Trek The Motion Picture, which was aimed as Paramount's response to the enormous success of Star Wars. Produced in the late 1970s, the first Star Trek movie went on to cost an incredible $46 million because of its numerous intricate visual effects scenes showcasing the reconstructed Starship Enterprise. Star Trek The Motion Picture moves at a slow pace because Gene Roddenberry's plot is less of a thrilling space adventure and more of a ponderous science fiction tone poem. Star Trek The Motion Picture features the legendary orchestral score by Jerry Goldsmith, which became the theme of Star Trek The Next Generation but it lacks the wit, charm, and vivid action viewers were used to from the cancelled TV series. Star Trek The Motion Picture has enormous science fiction ideas and was successful enough to bring back Star Trek as a viable film series, setting the groundwork for greater films to come, even though much of it is tedious to watch. Number 4 is Star Trek III – The Search for Spock Leonard Nimoy makes his directing debut in Star Trek III – The Search for Spock, which is a direct sequel to Star Trek II – The Wrath of Khan. Star Trek III is a passable and effective sequel overall, but it suffers from building to a predictable ending, despite a poignant last scene with Spock and Kirk. Christopher Lloyd plays the villainous Klingon Krug to perfection, but sadly, Kirstie Alley declined to play Savick again. Robin Curtis plays Savick admirably, and his main purpose in the film is to have Pon Far with the young Spock. Number 5 is Star Trek Insurrection Star Trek Insurrection, Jonathan Frake's second film, is more akin to an extended episode of Star Trek The Next Generation television series than it does to his action-packed and critically acclaimed Star Trek First Contact. With a more light-hearted tone, Star Trek Insurrection offers the ensemble moments of comedy and even song. It also has a romance subplot involving Picard and Anish, a Baku lady played by Donna Murphy, as well as the reunion of Will Riker and Deanna Troy. Regretfully, there is doubt about the morality of the forced relocation of the Baku. Picard rebels in accordance with the Prime Directive's principles, but the movie also makes the case that the benefits to billions of people could outweigh the fate of 600 Baku if the Federation discovered the Baku long-life secret. In any case, the Next Generation cinematic series took a turn for the worse with Star Trek Insurrection. Number 6 is Star Trek Generations The cast of Star Trek The Next Generation graduated to feature films with Star Trek Generations. Although Paramount had initially intended for it to be a crossover event picture starring the original Star Trek ensemble, the main attraction of Star Trek Generations was William Shatner's Kirk meeting Patrick Stewart's Picard, after Leonard Nimoy and DeForest Kelly withdrew. The series concluded with Kirk's somewhat disappointing demise. Despite seeing the USS Enterprise-D destroyed, David Carson's Star Trek Generations, written by Ronald D. Moore and Brandon Braga, feels like a glorified TV episode. Number 7 is Star Trek Into Darkness Star Trek Into Darkness, J.J. Abrams' second Star Trek movie, is a clear ripoff of Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, a mere 11 years after Star Trek Nemesis likewise performed a near-identical job. 
The director's denials and attempts at deceit to conceal the major plot twist in Star Trek Into Darkness made the movie worse. Star Trek Into Darkness is a beautifully shot and exciting roller coaster ride, but its other controversy causing moments, such as the one in which Alice Eve's Dr. Carol Marcus strips down to her underwear for no apparent reason and kills Captain Kirk instead of Spock, only for the captain to be instantly revived by Khan's magic blood, overshadow its positive aspects. Number 8 is Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country. Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country, the last movie starring the original cast of Star Trek, is a victorious send-off that joyfully commemorates the 25th anniversary of Star Trek in 1991. Star Trek V's lackluster results prompted Paramount to insist that the original crew receive a farewell film, rather than the ironically similar concept of a J.J. Abrams reboot 18 years later. The initial plan planned for a remake dubbed Starfleet Academy, featuring a younger ensemble. Director Nicholas Meyer, who helmed Star Trek II, returned to direct Star Trek VI, and Leonard Nimoy hatched the contemporary scenario of the wall coming down in outer space. Number 9 is Star Trek Beyond. Star Trek Beyond is a fantastic film that, astonishingly, gets the closest of the reboot films to replicating the spirit and camaraderie of the 1960s Star Trek TV series. Justin Lin, the former producer of J.J. Abrams, takes over as director. A surprising amount of respect is shown to Star Trek Enterprise in the witty screenplay co-written by Simon Pegg and Doug Jung. It's full of insider references to Star Trek mythology. The greatest new female character to be introduced in a Star Trek movie in decades, Sophia Boutella steals sequences as Jayla. Number 10 is Star Trek First Contact. Star Trek First Contact, which Jonathan Frakes directed with gusto, succeeded in part because it presented the Borg, the most well-known antagonist from Star Trek The Next Generation, on a large screen and because it included an interesting time travel narrative that revealed the first contact with the Vulcans, which established Frake's film as the start of Star Trek. Captain Picard, played by Patrick Stewart, became an action hero in the movie. Number 11 is Star Trek. With Star Trek, director J.J. Abrams accomplished a remarkable achievement by masterfully recasting the famous roles from Star Trek, the original series, while creating an intense, fast-paced thrill ride unlike any previous Star Trek film. It worked incredibly well, with a complete overhaul while preserving its symbolism. Abrams' film transformed Star Trek into a cutting-edge blockbuster with amazing special effects. The younger cast of Star Trek, which included Simon Pegg, John Cho, Anton Yelchin, Zoe Saldana, Carl Urban, Chris Pine, and Zachary Quinto. Number 12 is Star Trek IV The Voyage Home. Star Trek IV The Voyage Home, Leonard Nimoy's second feature film, is the most upbeat and entertaining Star Trek production. Nimoy's notion for the Enterprise crew to save humpback whales in 20th century San Francisco was first conceived as a way for Eddie Murphy to join the series after the comedian withdrew from the project. With the help of deft scripting and Nimoy's deft direction, Star Trek IV was able to successfully inject light-hearted humor and make the futuristic space heroes seem like complete outsiders in the present era. Number 13 is Star Trek II – The Wrath of Khan Star Trek II – The Wrath of Khan, directed by Nicholas Meyer, is the most impactful, most poignant, and greatest Star Trek film ever made. The film is a heartfelt meditation on sacrifice, sorrow, and friendship. It is also an exciting adventure story where Kirk eventually faces a no-win situation. All Star Trek movie villains are still measured against Ricardo Montalban's stark raving maniac, Khan. Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan has a lot of memorable scenes. How do you feel about these Star Trek films, which are listed from worst to best? Do you believe that the movies should be rearranged in order once again? Do share your views on this in the comments section. For more interesting stories and updates, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon for notifications. Goodbye.